Hey everybody, this is round two of Blackstone Fortress. Okay, so we're in combat mode here. And we need to do a couple of things that I forgot to do at the end of... Oh wait, no I'm not. No, 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 yes, I do. I need to do an event roll. Uh, I forgot to do an event roll. So uh, I'll do an event roll. Five. I think that's good. I think an event roll of five is typically good. Events uh, happen at the end when the uh, initiative deck is depleted. Then you do the event roll. So event roll of five is not dead yet. The leader must pick one hostile that was slain during the combat and has not returned to the battlefield, and then deploy them as close to the explorer as possible. That's not what I wanted. That is not good. So, the only things that have been slain are the drones, and so I guess they're just going to go straight over. One of them, it wasn't dead, actually, and just goes right over to Amelin, and so that's where it is now. So that's not great. And then I believe I also have to do a reinforcement roll for the hostiles. No, not yet. Reinforcement rolls happen at the beginning of a hostile turn. Okay, so this is the initiative deck. This is exactly the same order as um, as previ previous, well, sort of, uh, as it was initially. So I need to shuffle this, in other words. Um, so I'm just kind of doing my little mix-up shuffle here. Uh, that should have mixed it up by one. That shifted everything by one. Uh, and so now, well, now I'm, so I'll just keep shuffling. I hate shuffling just a couple of cards. I always feel like I'm not, never shuffling it sufficiently. Now at the beginning of combat, I'm, each player can try to make a gambit to jump forward in in the initiative order. So I guess I'll really quickly just kind of look at what the initiative order is. So one, and then Amelin, Janus, uh, Ghouls, Pius, and Tadius. Okay, that's really good. Um, under the circumstances, I think this is kind of how it needs to be, to be honest. Amelin could do with being in front of them. So that's something to keep in mind. I might I might have her do do a gambit. But f before we even have to decide on that, uh, I need to roll the destiny dice. I remove all doubles or, or all repeated numbers. So that's five, five, five. Those are useless now. But, ooh, wow. Oh, man. One and a six. That's really good. I mean, one to waste and then six to do whatever you want to do with. That's that's a great, that's great. Okay, so now I need to roll activation dice for each character. So I do it in the order that I have the character cards laid out. So this is Janus. Oh man, that's really good. Two, four, five, six. Well, he's going to need those against the Urghuls. He really will. Like, he's frontline Urghul guy right now. I mean, they're going to come rushing at him through f a f fiery blaze that Pius Vorn laid out last time. But they're going to get there. So, this is for Tadius the Purifier. I don't need him to do amazing. And he didn't. One, two, three, five. As I've said before, I really would love for him to get a six or more because then he can do his healing thing where he heals himself and anyone else in his hex, but not today. Uh, this one is pious, unfortunately, so that's one, two, three, two. Not great for her. And this will be for Amelin if I can find the other... Oh, the other dice is p with Pius, because she's got Overwatch. I forgot about that. Um, I'm trying to think. I think... Oh, I think that's wasted now. Yeah. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, well. Yeah, okay. I forgot that Overwatch, when you're at the end of the initiative order, Overwatch does you no good. 
Okay, so 1, 3, 4, and 5. 1, 3, 4, and 5 for Amelin. That's not bad. I mean, she's going to need it. But everyone, anybody's got a 6 if they need it. The question is whether Amelin should attempt a gambit against this spindle drone to try to move in front of it to kill it, essentially. The danger of letting this spindle drone go before Amelin is obviously he can take a... Um, he can take an attack, but further is that I have to roll for reinforcements. And if reinforcements are called, the threat level goes up, meaning his attack gets more lethal, and there are more of them. So I think it's going to be worth spending one of her measly die, like this measly one activation die, on rolling a gambit. Her agility is quite good. It's a d12. So she's going to make an agility roll, and on a success, or a critical success, as she just did, she gets to move her card pretty much wherever she wants on a critical success. Uh, so she's she was supposed to go second, so, oh, so I'm going to just have her go first instead, and now she gets to do uh, her attacks against this drone, which is very good. Okay, so, I mean, she, she doesn't... You know, I wouldn't say she specializes in melee. That's not her thing. Uh, but, I mean, it'll do. She will she can do it. So she's got a power blade. And when she's one square away, she gets 2d8 to spend on that power blade. Or to roll for that power blade. So I guess she'll just spend her lowest die, which is a 4, on her... Power blade attack against the spindle drone. Spindle drones have w two wounds, so a critical would kill it. And she got a critical and a success, so she kills it. So no sooner did it sort of resurrect itself and run its um, resurrection protocol uh, did we get rid of it again. Okay, so now she's got two die to spend. I guess she could just move, I guess. So I guess I'll just... Uh... Oh my gosh, she can circle around. It's dangerous. No, it's not dangerous. They're still closer to her. Yeah, so she's going to spend a five to go one, two, three. And then a six to go one, two, three like that. So now she can, or three, like that. Yeah. Now she can see the ghouls, and if she had a dice, she could shoot one of them. And there is this six just taunting, taunting me right here. I, I think, I, this is stupid. Because really, Pius, Pius could use that six. What if she just took a, a normal shot, like a really weak one one shot with her long rifle? Yeah, let's just do that. So we're going to spend one of the Destiny die and have her shoot a normal long rifle shot. Four hexes or more. One, two, three, four, five. So she, she gets to use her d12. She doesn't get to re-roll if she misses, but she might not miss. She gets one. One wound. That's not bad. Alright, so one of them is wounded. And that's her turn. Which, you know, you can't really complain about. That That works. Okay, so the next one in turn order is one. I believe I only have to re-roll for reinforcements. When the initiative card for a hostile group is reached, the hostile player must make a reinforcement roll if any hostiles in the group have been slain. To make a reinforcement roll, roll the black stone dice and look up the result. Okay, so yeah, I do have to roll for reinforcements. One, that's the worst thing that's, that could possibly happen. That is the absolute worst roll. So that means six reinforcements arrive. Now, lucky for me, I don't even have six spindle drones. Only four came in the box. So that's not a problem. But that's a problem. <laughs> that there are four spindle drones 
ready to uh, slaughter Amalyn Shadow Guide, that's a problem. And the threat level has gone up to one. So that's not great. Okay, so we'll hope that their, um, that their action, their AI, is kind to us. And that's a black stone die. Eight. Uh, I think that was retreat for the ghouls, but I don't know what it is for these guys. Um, so they are adjacent to a visible explorer, so they do an onslaught action. Onslaught action on the back of the cheat sheet here is attack the closest explorer in range, then attack the closest explorer that is in range. Could be the different, a different one, could be the same one. Well, in this case, it's, it's the same one. So they're going to do one, two, three, four attacks against Amelin. This could end Amelin. This could send her out of action. Their threat level, one now, so they get D8 attacks, or, or rather, they attack with a D8. They're one square away, or one hex away. So I'll just roll two D8 and then two D8. Oh dear, that's a critical and a success, and a critical. Wow. That's really bad. Okay, so what that means is that Amelin, bless her little heart, gets two critical wounds, which cannot be healed uh, until she goes back to Precipice, which won't happen for another seven cards, and um, one normal wound. So best case scenario, she will be down to one att one well, two attacks, best case scenario. That's if we heal this wound here. So this is definitely, uh, take. this has taken a turn for the worse for Amelin. Uh, to the point that I almost feel like we should just kill her. <laughs> just get rid of her. She's a liability. Uh, but I won't do that. Um, okay, so that's too bad. Boy, is that too bad. All right, next is James Drake which um, it's kind of a bummer because I because I've got these traps laid. So what is he gonna do? Well, he does have a ranged attack. So he can do stuff. He's got a uh, pistol. And he is one, two. Oh, but I, I think I judged that we can't see those guys yet. So wow, this is really too bad. This is not great. Um, okay, so he I think we're going to have to send him into Overwatch mode. Which I did last time and wasted a dice. But this time, it should really be okay. So I'm going to have to... He's going to have to give up one of his activation dice. And then I decrement all of the dice that he has left. So the 4 becomes a 3. The 5 becomes a 4. And then the 6 becomes a five. So he is uh, somewhat less powerful now, but he's got dice to spend when those ghouls inevitably come rushing towards them, which I wish now would happen sooner than later, but I don't think it is going to because I think Pius goes first. No, they go. Okay, perfect. Great. All right, so these are the ghouls. In order to figure out what they do, None of them have been lost, so I don't have to make a reinforcement roll. That's the good news. So in order to figure out what they do, I roll black stone dice. And that is a six. I think, I think they have no line of sight to the explorer. They're not engaged, but they are close. Oh, they're going to fall back again. Well, they can't fall back. We have them surrounded, so in this case... Double the hostile's move value when they take this action. If the hostile can make a move that ends in a hex that is not visible to any explorer, they do. If they cannot, they attack the closest explorer in range. Okay, that is what I wanted. Perfect. Because luckily, because Amelin has full view of them, they, they I, I don't see... Well, I guess they could go over there, couldn't they? Yeah, I think they could do that. That's what they would do, unfortunately. Unless I have Amelin spend this die 
to move one, two, three, and then she would have v full view of them. I don't know if she would have view of them over in that corner. I think that corner might actually be out of sight, amazingly. Yeah, that, that, that corner. Well, you know what? No, I think that corner she could see them in. I mean, you can't really argue with the line of sight viewer, right? Yeah. All right, cool. So they do have to attack. That's awfully good. That's what I really, really wanted them to do. So they're going to go one, two, towards the closest. Oh, wait, but that's not right, because she's not there. And if she was there, then who would be closest? One, two, three. She would be closest. And she can't take any more attacks. Okay. So, they're gonna move into this corner. Unbelievable. I think... I think this trap is not gonna work out for Piusborn. Unfortunately. Because now she activates and these get removed. So that trap was wasted. That's a real, real bummer. All right, so, um, and she, she's got rubbish, rubbish activation, di activation dice this round. But it is enough to move her forward out of this hallway and towards them. She gets to ignore cover. So I'm going to spend her measly one to move her up. One, two, three. So that way she has cover against them if she needs it. She's two hexes away from them now. So she should be able to do a cleansing flame as long as she spends a six or higher. She doesn't have a six, but there's this destiny dice. So I'm going to do that. She's going to spin the Destiny dice, and then she is going to make a 2d12 attack against each ghoul in that hex. And I just realized you cannot see what's going on there. Okay, there we go. Okay, so she's got... Oops. <laughs> she's moving the walls around. So she's one, two hexes away. She's going to be a she's going to do a 2d12 attack against every single ghoul a, a unique attack against every ghoul in that space. Oh, and one of these goes with one of those. Oops. There we go. Okay. So first attack. Nothing. Um I feel cheated because the uh the dice roller was at an angle, and I'm convinced that that turned a good roll into a bad one. All right, next one. Critical, critical. So, And I forgot to call out which which one, but I was thinking I was going in sort of 12, 6 to whatever, so this one's dead. And then next attack on the left guy there. Uh... I'm going to read that as a critical today. It was a cocked die, but you know what? I'm taking it because these drones. Uh, and now there's this guy left. Uh, okay, so that, that wasn't bad. That was really good. So she just killed how many, how many wounds worth of ghouls? Six wounds worth of ghouls. So she's going to roll a blackstone die to see if she can get six or lower. She gets a 14, so she gets no inspiration. She kills two ghouls, and she's not inspired by it. That's just all in a day's work for her. Okay, so she's got three more die left. So, oh, actually, yeah, so she shouldn't have rolled that yet because it's not the end of her turn yet. Okay, because she can still attack. I mean, she can just do a normal... Can she? Yeah, she can still attack. With, with a one or more, she can do a single d12 attack. So I'm kind of thinking that that's going to be this die here, a two. And she gets another wound against it. 
so that's one, two wounds. So she'll spend another two for another die. I'm going to swap out dies for superstitious reasons. It's critical. So that ghoul is dead. So that was a total of nine. Three, six, nine. So now she'll roll the Blackstone die to see if she gets inspired. And she rolled a six, so she does get an inspiration token on her card. That's good. She still has something left. Uh, so I think I could move her one, two, three into this hallway and just have her take a stand against these spindle drones which I think, I think I'm going to do. It's kind of scary sending her that close into the one, two, three, into the sort of the bottleneck. But I, I think she's the one to just obviously clear out a bunch of, of things. So that's what she's going to go for. And she's inspired. So, well, she's not inspired. She has an inspiration point. Which, if she gets enough of those, she will become inspired. Okay, so that's Pius Vorn's turn. Last hero to go is Tadius the Purifier. It looks like I'm probably wasting <laughs> Janus Drake's Overwatch dice again. Um, he needs to go help out over here, obviously. So he's going to... Where's his card? Oh, over here. He's going to use his measly one to move closer. He's got a two movement speed, I think. Yeah, he does. So one, two. And he can... He can do that servo skull action. One, two, three. So he, if he attacks this group here, he's within range for his servo skull stubber action, which is a 2d8 as long as he spends his five up activation. So he'll do that. So he'll roll 2d8s against that group. And he gets one success. I mean, it's better than no success. So they get they get a wound. Somebody within that group gets a wound. How many? No, is that sustained to fire? So he rolls... Oh, he rolls twice, because he's at the range of 2d8 anyway. And so he gets to uh, roll twice. Carry out each attack one at a time, one after the other. The target chosen for the second attack can be the same or a different one. Yeah, we'll go after the same... No, you know what? We'll go after a different one, just in case we get a critical. Critical and a success. So I think this guy is dead, because these spindle drones only have two? Yeah, they only have two wounds. Yeah, so that's... One, two. Yeah, that's... Okay, cool. That was good. That was good for him. Okay. Now, he could keep going with the same kind of attack, and I think that's the smartest thing for him to do under the circumstances. So I'm going to spend his two for just a normal servo... No, he can't do a two. He can do a three, though. He can spend three for his 2d8. This is just a single attack. And once again, I think I'm going to go for a fresh one, just in case. Critical. Good thing I did that. So he's dead. Now, he can spend his two activation die from here, one, two, three, to roll a single d8 with his las pistol. So I think I'm going to do that, and I'm going to just, I'm going to target the wounded spindle drone and hope for the best. It's a critical, you know, kind of a waste, arguably, but not really, because I really needed to clear out those spindle drones. And no more activation die here, destiny die here, no more activation dice on the cards. So that's the, that's that round, really. Really, really dicey, and all of Janus Drake's um, dice get wasted. That's too bad. I was really counting on that trap to go off, and it never went off. So, oh well. And there is still a spindle drone out there. Guess we'll see what happens next time. Thanks for watching.